fight is uh, scheduled for the O2 Arena on the 12th of October when I'm reliably told that Leeds United do not have a match that weekend. So there's no excuse not to come along and share in what is going to be, I'm sure, another great Leeds occasion. And I think it's safe to say that it's going to be a more eye-catching fight maybe than the last one. Styles make fights, this guy can punch a bit, he comes forward and he will be looking to make a name for himself on what for him would be the biggest day of a professional career which dates back some 13 years. He comes into this on the back of eight straight wins and for Josh it's actually very close now to 10 years as a professional. I don't know if you knew that, but October 31st, he'll have been in the pro game for 10 years. And uh, here, defending his title once again, and having had three difficult ones, Lee Selby, that fantastic occasion at Elland Road, then the memorable night in Manchester against Carl Frampton, and then uh, one which perhaps for reasons which he might uh, expand on, probably he'd like to move on from the uh, messy defence against Kid Galahad last time out. But now you're going into it, Josh, as the overwhelming favourites. Tell us your thoughts about being back here in, in Leeds once again. Um, start off by saying uh, thank you for the spot on the last one, if you were there um, at the last fight. It would an hell of an atmosphere, hell of a turnout. Um, I just apologise for the way that the fight turned out. Um, as always, I give it my all, and I always want to try and entertain the fans. And first and foremost, and you just turned down your numbers. And uh, obviously, Mr. Barry didn't want to be really, really make it a fight. He was there to survive and get paid. Um, but job done. We move forward, and uh, I. I said to a lot of others that would potentially be looking at um, a unification fight. I felt that there were nowhere else for us to go, but it's not worked out like that. And uh, that's no fault of our own or, or the manager's team or, or, or Frank's or the promotion. It's just there were champions out there who don't seem to want it. And um, it, it's proven very difficult to, to try and make a unification fight, but I'm a champion. And I don't want to sit on the sideline. I don't want to just call myself a champion without fighting. Um, you know, you've got to be active, especially at this level. I've been at a stage where I've had 11 months of inactivity and come back, and it's it's not good. That ring rust and just the little edges. You need to be active. So we're back, back in Leeds. Um, Takuchi got a massive opportunity here, a tough, tough fighter and uh, you know he's been given a golden ticket here, he's got a full camp ahead of him and I'm sure he's going to bring a fight but for us all I'm concentrating on is winning and winning in style. Yeah I mean if I, I, it's probably right that I just connect up one or two of the dots there, Oscar Valdez uh, was offered the fight, Josh being prepared to go over there or alternatively bring him over here and we understand that in all probability Valdez is going to be moving up as the WBO champion moving up to Super Feather so maybe the possibility of that uh, of that title being declared vacant Gary Russell Jr as students of the sport will know fights about once a year I mean how he pays his electricity bill I'm not quite sure but he he uh, he was he was offered it and again wasn't wanting it and Leo Santa Cruz the WBC champion flatly turned down the opportunity to come over here and fight in Leeds and didn't seem too keen on the fight over there either Josh. No no and um, you know a few of lads were, were saying that the, the, that the passport's ready and they're, they're putting the savings away and getting ready to uh, for a trip over in states and you know Frank and then the team tried everything they could to, to make that happen um, Obviously, because we didn't fight until uh, June, negotiations couldn't really start until after that. But for a good five, six weeks, it was battling back and forward, and you know, towards back back in the year, we're running out of time, and we've got to stay active, we've got to be in fights, and uh, you know, I'm hoping that getting through this one, and we'll see what comes into in, in, into next year. But I think prior to the last fight, I may have put too much pressure on myself. For you know, it's definitely going to be it's gonna def definitely going to be happening after. Um, 
I think I'll add once we get him out of the way, just all we need to do is win, but cheers buddy. Nice cup of tea. Um but for me now uh, I'm concentrating on winning, you know, keeping hold of that title. You know, I'm one of the six or seven world champions that the UK's got and uh, ultimately the dream is to unify. You know, it's it's frustrating the fact that I've done nothing but take big fights over, over the last three, four fights. I've done what I've had to do. You know, Lee Selby, straight away defence with Carl Frampton, take 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 him a mandatory on in uh, in Kick and you know, they were ranked in, in top five of, of the world, all three of them fighters and um, I'm just desperate for that for that unification fight. I want it so bad. You know, I'm, I'm I'll be satisfied just to have a one fight against any of the champions, win another title, call myself a unified unified champion, and then after that, I just defend the title until the cows come home. But um, you know, it won't it won't to be, and this is where we are. And to got you ranked number four in IBF. You know, we're going right down to the bottom of this. We've picked a, a tough tough man, and. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting night as always, and it's, certainly for myself, for my own personal uh, outlook, I want to come back with a performance like no other on October 12th. And if you do keep on producing wins and an eye-catching one, then obviously it becomes, it makes the possibility of those unification fights very much more likely, they become more marketable, and uh, I spoke to uh, Frank and George Warren about the possibilities of 2020 and they say very much it's on the cards provided he comes through against Sophie Ann to uh, in 2020 look ahead to American trips or maybe another big fight at Elland Road to replicate that unbelievable night against Lee Selby last uh, last May wasn't it but anyway let's uh, let's hear from Sean uh, you've uh, had a look at uh, Sophie Ann and uh, with Josh, and you've assessed his capabilities. What do you see in, in, in him as a fighter? I mean, vastly experienced, been around a long time, and coming in on the back of eight straight wins. Yeah, very experienced fighter, and um, to be honest, the highest ranked fighter that's available at this time. He's ranked number four in IBF, um, number two and number three in vacant. So he is actually what I'd call a, a mandatory. Um, we've not gone for the number 15 Italian or 13 or 12, we've gone straight for the most capable Irish ranked fighter that there is. So it is a genuine fight. This is not a fight that we've taken expecting to win easily. It's a fight that we've taken. We've got to raise this game again. We've got to keep going, we've got to keep that momentum going until we don't get the super fights. And um, he's very, very capable. I've looked at him. He keeping an eye on things, gone back over his history of fights, and he's very, very capable. I mean, let's not forget, his step forward will come over here and grab this fight with both hands. Some of the Santa Cruz, Valdez, Gary Russell didn't want to do, he's come forward and taken it. You don't know that unless you're capable, so we're taking him very, very serious. He's a good fighter, he's got plenty of great about him, and I think, um, I think it all makes for a very, very good night. We'll hear from uh, Sofiane in just a moment, but uh, you, you've studied him. Uh, he's a southpaw, I hear. And <coughs> what, sort of, what sort of style does he bring in? Um, I see a little bit of everything in him, really. I think he's, he's quite durable. I think he can bring whatever he needs to bring. Whatever he needs to apply, he can apply the way the fight goes, you know. He can box a bit, he can fight, um, he can be evasive. He can, he can come forward, he's got a little bit of everything, I quite like him as a fighter. Um, I, th I think it makes, all makes for a very, very good fight, I really do. We have a, an interpreter here, as you probably gather, she's uh, translating everything that's being said on this side of the table, and telling him, uh, telling him what they reckon of him. So now uh, it's your turn to speak to the people out here. For Sophia. After being a professional for, what is it now, 13 years, this represents a fantastic opportunity. How do you feel about this fight? This is a childhood dream for me. 
And how long, you say a childhood dream, how long have you been in boxing? When did you start? Donc vous dites un rêve d'enfant. Euh, quand est-ce que vous avez commencé à faire le boxe quand est-ce, euh, Depuis quand êtes-vous là-dedans J'ai commencé la boxe à 10 ans et demi. I started uh, boxing at 10 years old, 10 and a half years old. And you have, uh, what is it, 35 wins against three defeats in this long career. How would it change your life if you were to take this title? Donc, vous avez gagné 35 fois pendant tout ce temps-là, contre trois défaites. Comment est-ce que ça changerait votre vie si vous gagnez ce titre Ça changerait tout. It would change everything. Everything. This is what you've dreamt of, and it would uh, it would get you worldwide worldwide renown if you won. Et donc c'est ce dont vous avez rêvé, et ça, vous allez avoir un, un renom euh, dans le monde entier si vous gagnez. Peut-être. Maybe. Maybe. Let us hope. Tell us your thoughts about Josh as a fighter, because you must have you must have seen his big contests. Donc, racontez-nous euh, vos pensées sur euh, Josh comme combattant, parce que je suis sûr que vous l'avez vu dans ses, euh, euh, dans ses euh, concours. Il est un grand champion. Il est un grand champion, un grand champion. En Angleterre, euh, un grand champion, c'est le plus fort en Angleterre. Donc, le plus grand champion en Angleterre, c'est Josh Warrington. Et voilà, moi c'est une chance et une opportunité pour moi qu'on me donne. And this is an opportunity that I'm being given. Et j'essaierai de faire la lettre au mieux pour... Euh, voilà. And I will try, try to give my best and to show myself in my best light. Alain Vastine is the trainer who's going to be overseeing uh, Sophie-Anne's preparations for October the 12th. Can you uh, ask Alan about the tactics and how he feels that Sofiane might be able to beat Josh Warrington? Donc Alan, euh, sur vos tactiques et qu'est-ce que vous euh, qu'est-ce que vous pensez sur euh, euh, que euh, 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 Sofiane pourrait gagner Josh? Bah, aussi bien en boxe, euh, rien n'est gagné d'avant. So uh, in box, like in, in boxing, like in anything else, nothing is uh, a, t- a given. Et on viendra ici. On viendra pas faire de la figuration. On viendra justement pour gagner la ceinture. On viendra pas faire de figuration. De la so and we're coming here. We're coming here to win that belt. Mm. We're not coming as a, to show off. Just to win that belt. On a une chance. C'est à nous de la saisir. Well, we have an opportunity and it is up to us Et to grab it. On fera tout, tout and, pour la... and we will do everything, everything to get it. Alors, what uh, do you believe uh, makes Sofiane special? What are his principal attributes? Donc, euh, Alain, qu'est-ce que vous pensez sont les attributs euh, précis qui rendent Sofiane grand, fort? Euh, son courage. His courage. Son courage, sa volonté de, de y arriver. Et, euh, his courage, his determination to get there. On a toujours des défauts, mais on peut Everyone travailler ses défauts. Defects, et, euh, but you can work yes. on your uh, faults. Il a un gros cœur. And he has a very big heart. Et quand il monte sur un ring, c'est pour gagner ce propre de la figuration. And when he gets up on that ring, it is he's getting there to win, en not to son just stay around. En son he's all the while respecting his adversary. Has respect, but he has courage, has determination, and says this is what he's dreamt of, Josh. Yeah, that means this uh, sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> this build up is a little bit uh, more, more uh, mild nature than the, the last one there. Um, I will say what a beautiful language. I only got like a E in my GCSE French. I mean, I can only just speak English, so uh, <laughs> never, I can't understand what I'm saying. But they said the guys, he realised he's got a massive opportunity. Um, he's coming into my backyard. He knows of the task at hand. Um, and echoing what Johnny said there, 
I'm not going to take him lightly. It'd be, it'd be ridiculous for me to think that this is a walkover of given, and especially with last fight, and as there was the way that that went and my own personal performance. I want to come back with a bang. And not just to, uh, not, not really to make a statement for anyone else, but to just show that I'm a world champion and uh, uh, everyone's getting giddy about wanting to fight me and you know everyone who's, who's underneath me wants to be in my position. I'm just gonna, I always want to show that I'm serious here. You know world champion and, and, and if I were to step up to any of the champions then I'll beat them as well and I've got to show class. I've got to bring the best on this now. This is this is the time to, to really show that, John. You're normally so upbeat and uh, and and very very much uh, somebody who trades on confidence and feeds off the support of this wonderful crowd that you've got here in Leeds. How down were you personally after that last fight? I mean, it, you, you wouldn't be human if you had, if you didn't walk away from it thinking, well, what was all that about? Uh, yeah, obviously frustrated, um, frustrated for fans inside there, frustrated from my own personal performance. I'm the a, I'm a biggest, I'm a biggest critic, and um, you know, Barry didn't really want to fight. He, I'm, I'm not talking just like stood toe to toe, but just even having a boxing match, he, he just wanted to hold, he just wanted to survive. And there were times of I could have done things a little bit better. We worked on certain game plans and. There were times when I wasn't really listening to uh, Johnny Kebab inside of me, but uh, you know, he gave me a bollocking for that after. Um, but like 29 fights is probably my one bad night at the office. Still got the win, and when we're moving forward, you know, they're not always going to be fights of the year. But we had an idea that it, it, might, it might play like that, and to be fair, all they were bothered about was, was getting paid and, and surviving the night. And uh, like I said, that, that's that chapter done. We move on. Sure. How much is he ready to go again now? And uh, and because I know you were you were frustrated as well. And uh, absolutely, a little bit, a little bit angry. Is that the right word? Yeah, they made a thousand swear that John. It was stood there, now left and out, having to watch that. I mean, listen, it's one of them. Like I say, it's done now. It, it, it wasn't a pretty sight. It wasn't pretty to watch. But. Like I can say, we've had a bad night at office, we've come away with a win. Anthony Joshua had a bad night, bad night at office and got absolutely leathered. Uh, so I consider myself, I consider us lucky that, you know, we've got opportunity, we'll still go back as champions and um, we'll still keep going forward. Still How much is he ready to go again now then? <laughs> well, if you look at him now, he's, he's under 10 stone now, and we're nine, 10 weeks out. Um, we've had him back in gym, I'm having to. Uh, just calm him down a little bit. As, as you know, we've got him and then we've got a really small English champion. Maxi Holmes is in with us now. And it's a good stable, good experience stable. They're all kind of championship level fighters. Um, and I think the bounce will make each other, they're training hard. And they, that's all I want to do is train, you know. It's hard to get them to stop training. I mean, him, him now, 10 weeks out, under 10 stone. You know, we'll have to send him out for some uh, a bit of dinner tonight, fish and chips and so much to keep his weight up, you know. You'll pay it. No, we'll sort it out, you know, might as well pay for everything else. But no, we're looking, <laughs> we're looking forward to going back to Arena. There's one little bit of Las Vegas. Where is Wing Tom? In Arianna. Scandalous man. Seeing all his old friends again, Phil Edwards. <laughs> There's a, Phil a, Edwards, Roll, Roll McIntosh, and uh, Alan Foster. Can't wait to see him all again. Good pals of mine. But no, we always enjoy fighting in Leeds. Uh, I think this time we, you are going to see you've got you've got a man here that's come to fight. He don't need to bring all that, you know, the attitude, and he don't need, he's not slagging, he's not name calling, he's not cocky. He's just confident. He's just confident because he knows he's coming. He's coming to fight. It kind of uh, a reference there to the amazing support that you guys have given Josh through his career. Can I ask Sofiane if he is ready for that passionate support that's going to be behind his opponent? Sofiane, are you ready for this passionate passionné who va être là pour votre votre la personne contre qui vous allez combattre au moment du combat? 
Does he fear the crowd's support? <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything more about that to you? What makes you sure that you can cope with it? Ask Alain, so. Alors, euh, est-ce que vous voulez euh, dire un peu plus là-dessus? Qu'est-ce qui vous... Pourquoi êtes-vous sûr que vous allez gérer tout ça, ce soutien passionné contre, euh, enfin, pour votre, euh, 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 votre ennemi, quoi? Voilà, moi, je fais mon sport. I do, I'm here to do my sport. <laughs> De le faire de mieux que je peux. To do the best that I can. Être le plus professionnel avec les petits ménagers. And to be the uh, most professional possible with the little means that I have. Et euh, j'espère qu'avec mes petits moyens, je pourrais renverser des montagnes. And I hope that with my little means, I will uproot mountains. Can you ask Alain as well how, how he thinks Sofiane will cope with that? Amazing support that Josh gets. Et Alain, que pensez-vous vous? Euh, comment est-ce que Sofiane va gérer ce soutien formidable que Josh reçoit et va recevoir? Des, des spectateurs. From the spectators. Yes, yes. Ouais, c'est normal, il est chez lui. On, this on, is a, on a déjà vécu ça. He on is. Sait, uh, this is your home match. Un boxeur quand il est chez lui, il a tout le public derrière uh, lui. C'est oui. tout à fait normal. C'est lui le champion. We Mais lived nous, this. On vient, on vient ici. We've lived this before. Euh, on We vient know ici. that when it's a home match. Il a déjà fait en Ukraine contre le champion d'Europe. Il a été champion d'Europe. On l'a, on a déjà subi. Uh, on a déjà vécu. On fera tout pour uh, gagner. On vient ici pour so gagner. So we've lived this before, and we've been. Uh, we've sp- we know that when a boxer is working on is boxing on his home ground, then he's got the whole public behind him. And this has happened to us before. It happened in Ukraine. We had all the crowds for the uh, supporting our <coughs> opponent. But uh, we, regardless of that. We are coming to win and we will win. 29 fights undefeated, Josh. And uh, I think, uh, you know, before we wrap it up for the time being, you, you, you must be very aware that the support of these guys has, has been a big plus in your favour. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Uh, 29 fights, 10 years abroad, coming to 10 years abroad, on being. Um, and, you know, the fans are fantastic. I mean, uh, it's just got bigger and bigger, and it's grown beyond Leeds, beyond Yorkshire, nationwide. I mean, I get, we get fan mail from from all around the world. You know, some people say inspirational from where we've come to and where we've got to. I don't believe the journey's finished. It's, there's still a lot more to go, and I feel like it's the final chapter of where I want to be in terms of unifying the division, and whatnot. But I think um, in terms of for the fans who turn out to the Leeds Arena, it's just uh, it's world championship boxing on your doorstep. And it doesn't come around often, um, but it certainly has inspired you know, fight, young fighters around um, around the city. And like some on the undercard, you've got like, like Jack Bateson fighting for his uh, fighting for his first title. And Paul Liam's to, to follow in my footsteps. Um, you know, but Leeds is becoming a, a strong boxing city now. And uh, I've been proud to, to fly the flag, but I can't thank the fans enough for, for the, the way they turn out with the numbers. I mean, you know, we're walking out to um, the last fight I thought it would potentially could be the last time we were going to be at the arena. Um, and they were in the numbers, and it was a, it was a fantastic noise. Um, and I believe this one will be as, again. And all I'll say is just keep following the journey, keep supporting, we we'll do it together. Um, Keep chipping away, winning the fights, and the unification fight, it will come eventually, I'm sure of it. Do you, do you sit here thinking, you know, I've got to where I am, I've come through these great performances, do you think that the best is still to come? Yeah, definitely, I think when my back's against the wall and when I get written off, then that's when uh, the very best Josh Warrington comes out. Um, I feel like last time I'll come off them two great performances in 2018, with Lee Selby and Carl Frampton and they were, like I say, there were more energy put into, into the build up with old Barry than, than the fight itself. Um, but I've got a bit between my teeth again now. It, it feels different going into this camp, it's just my mindset, everything's different. 
Um, last time I just wanted to punch Barry Bennett because I didn't like him. This time I just it's about winning a performance up for myself and, uh, and I just got to keep winning. Keep winning, you know, racking up the wins as, as being a world champion. And like I say, I've been patient in the past and I finally got a world title shot. So I'm a bit patient this time and hopefully one of the champions will, uh, will step up and take it. It is a, a stacked undercard, as you can see from the poster behind me. We've got the Commonwealth Super Featherweight uh, contest between Zelfa Barrett, who had that great win against Leon Woodstock Jr. against Jordan McCory, who's a tough guy, always comes to fight, so you can guarantee that McCory will really take it to Zelfa and uh, see what he's got to offer. That's a, a Commonwealth title fight, Barrett defending his title at Super Featherweight. There's the vacant Commonwealth light heavyweight title, Lyndon Arthur against the big punching Ghanaian Emmanuel Amin, and the English featherweight title, which Josh alluded to, uh, Michael Rambaletza against Jack Bateson, which uh, has the makings of uh, an excellent fight and another another talent coming through, Sean. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think the uh, one I'm interested in in particular is Jack Bateson against Rambalasta because Rambalasta you know is not a bad fighter comes to fight he uh, seems to have been about forever um, and, and he's one of the early doors we they would talk of us fighting him but it, it never happened for whatever reason but that one will be a fantastic fight How much has uh, your lad's success actually generated a buzz around Leeds and around the gyms? Have you seen people getting enthused and wanting to emulate it? Yeah we get uh, <laughs> I think boxing in Leeds in general is um, it's on the up now, you know, it's booming. There's gyms opening all over, there's uh, amateur clubs uh, springing up, there's a new one open just up road from us, Alliance. Um, I think it is, it's on the rise in Leeds, and that's what, that's what it should be, it's a big city, it's a proud city. Apart from football, we need someone else to shout about as well, don't we? Because you know it's. Um, we'll be coming up this year. Won't we? We'll be going up this year, definitely. As we say every year, we'll be going up this year. But I really think we will this year, John. I honestly think we will this year. Leeds in Premiership, the only five world champion, and more coming through. Now it's fantastic for boxing in Leeds at the moment. Like I say, it's not just about us. It's about. Making you also that fantastic facility there, that arena, you know, long when we finish boxing. First you know, direct we'll arena, I've got to get the title of <coughs> the place right. First uh, direct arena. 12th of October, and uh, they start at 40 quid, all the way up to the uh, super duper hospitality package at ringside for 350 quid. Tickets, I gather, are, are, are available as of now through the First Direct Arena, www.firstdirectarena.com. So uh, make it a special night. Right, well, they'll be doing photographs, and of course, you'll be able to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with the fighters, with Sean, with Alain, or with uh, Sophie Anne through the translator. You'll have the opportunity for that, and of course, face-to-face -face photographs. But before then, have we got any... Uh